Yeah, buddy. Yeah. All right, Tackle Warehouse fans, we made it from California. Flew into Baltimore last night, yes. and now we're here with my buddy. We're doing a little pre-production meeting. That's what we're calling it today, at least. Yeah, why, what, you know, initially we talked about being in an office or in a restaurant. Why, why do that when we could go fish that's, and have a production meeting? That's not how Tackle Warehouse rolls. We like to be out here on the water. We got a few hours on the water to chat a little bit and get ready for tomorrow. Tomorrow, what do we got? Vlog day number one, we're gonna be fishing the upper Chesapeake Bay in an area called the Susquehanna Flats. We're gonna be launching in an area called the Northeast Creek, and it's a, basically a big wintering area for bass. The, the current's slower there, the bait moves in, and there's a ton of largemouth this time of the year. It's gonna be really interesting. You're gonna see a lot of stuff that's unique to this part of the country. Mm -hmm. You're gonna see a lot of baits utilized that are sort of undercover, secret sort of style lures. It's gonna be good. Okay. Yes. And then the next day, oh no, no, we got Ike Live tomorrow night. Then too. we're gonna do Ike Live tomorrow night. Okay. I can't wait to have you guys on the show. We're gonna be talking about Tackle Warehouse. It's our Christmas special. We're gonna be giving away some Christmas cheer. It's yep. gonna be good. And then finish it off with some jet boat fishing, which is something I've never done. We've never shot a vlog on River Smallies before. I, I'm real excited. Uh, vlog day number two, uh, before you guys head back to Cali. It's gonna be cold, mm -hmm. it's gonna be nasty but you're gonna to get to see one of the best smallmouth fisheries in the world, the Upper Susquehanna River in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. I can't wait, it could be, could be a 50 fish day, maybe. All right, well I look forward to it. Let's get this meeting started. Let's go. <laughs> Production meeting's gonna to be tough, fellas. 38 degree muddy water, not good. <laughs> I don't mind the mud, but I mind I, I mind the mud when it's when, it's, when it's, cold. it's cold. You know what I mean? If this was warm, muddy water, it's one thing. Yeah, what's the visibility there? Uh, a couple inch, maybe four, four inches. Four, right? Yeah. It's not bad. It could be worse. The water clarity in the winter, man. And this is, you know, I know you guys don't do a lot of vlogs in winter time conditions, but this is winter. This is winter conditions. High 30s, uh, water temperature. Low 40 water temperature. Cold. You. You have the curse to follow you guys around. Yeah. Look at this, blue, you know, bluebird, high pressure day. This is gonna be a challenge, man. When was it uh, raining last year? So it rained the last two days really, really okay. steady. You know, I think we ended up getting a couple inches of rain. And most of these lakes are, are runoff lakes. They're, they eventually drain into the tidal Delaware River, but they go through a series of dammed ponds, and this is one of them. So, you know, this, when, it, when it's cold like this, generally a jerk bait, and a, and a vibrate, lipless vibration are your, your go-tos, but, you know, spinnerbait and a, and a vibration jig would, wouldn't be out of play either today. So which jerkbait is this? Is That's the, the uh, ripstop. Rip ripstop. The small nine. Rip yeah. Generally, you know, the smaller jerkbaits this time of the year are better, but again, you know, the water being dirty, we might upsize it, put some orange in the belly. Yes. Oh, yes! Woo, woo. In the clear! Perch. Look at that. A big, uh, big yeah. yeller. Look at that. Oh, look at that perch. Damn! It's <laughs> a good yeller, man. There we go. All right. Wrap a rip stop. That's a good sign. I tell you, you know, even though we're bass fishing, this time of the year, when you catch game fish, you're in the right area, right? So it's not a large mouth, it's not a small mouth, but it's a game fish. That's a good, good sign. He jacked it too, didn't he? Oh yeah, <laughs> crushed it. <laughs> Things are vicious, man. See, that's, yeah, that's, that's what I, I mean, this time of the year, a lot of guys put their equipment away, they stop fishing. You can still catch them, you know? As, as cold as that water gets. I've caught them through the ice, I've caught fish, so. You, you know, they still have to eat. You know, conditions are terrible, but they've still got to eat. I tell you, that bite you got on the paws, you know, even though that was a perch, it tells me a lot. And it really makes me want to switch to something that I can can slow down a little bit, you know? What do you got there? I'm going to, uh, this is a old school classic bait. It's a Rapala Shad Wrap, mm. but it's the shallow Shad Wrap. If you look, it's got just what I call a little scoop bill. It goes down and just makes a little scoop. This is a great bait because it's only going to dive down about two to four feet, about three foot. 
but I can get this bait to suspend just by upgrading trebles. And this is a size seven shallow shad wrap. And all I'm gonna do is I like to upgrade to uh, uh, VMC uh, round bend trebles. And I like to upgrade that belly size by two sizes. So I'm gonna go from a six all the way up to a four, put that on the belly, spin that other one off. And then I'm gonna go up one hook size on the tail. This normally comes with uh, a size eight treble. And here's a little trick too, why I'm, why I'm upgrading these hooks is you don't really, for me, I never use split ring pliers. All I do is I get that old hook and I'll use my fingernail and I'll, I'll lift up that split ring and I'll get that hook started to come out. When you get that old one started to come off, it has opened up that ring. And then I put my new one on and as I slide that around, the old one slides off and you've got your hook change. So just by upsizing hooks, two sizes on the belly, one size on the tail, I'm gonna make this bait suspend. And it's a real winter time, late fall, early pre-spawn killer because that bait will sit motionless when you pause it. Um, this is typical Northeast, what I would call Northeast mill pond. A um, lot, of, lot of different species. And these little ponds, although they're shallow, the deepest part of this lake's like, oh, okay. deepest part of this lake's like eight feet. Uh, there's a little yellow perch. That's the size you normally catch. That's a typical size yellow perch. But here's the interesting thing about this is these big bass, bass, big bass in lakes that don't have shad, gizzard shad, there's no gizzard shad, there's no threadfin. Dude, they will gobble that perch up. I've caught five and six to seven pounders in the Northeast that have had that tail sticking out of their mouth right there. <laughs> so that's, that's food. So another reason, we talked about the orange in the bait. Look at that pronounced orange, orange fin. You can almost match it up to that rip stop. Look at it, it's almost in the same little spots. Um, baits with orange in them when you have a yellow perch fishery mm -hmm. like this are real, real important. I like it though, I like that we're getting bites. All right, Ike, 2019, there's a lot of changes happening this next upcoming year. Yeah. Got the uh, MLF tour yes. going. So just wanted to get like a little idea of what your mindset is going into this, this new year and yeah. How are you preparing differently if you are? And yep. I know you only expect so much. A lot of it's going to be learned as you're yep. as you're going through the first couple months. But what's been going on? Yeah, you know, it's to me, it's a it's a very exciting time for the sport. Um, but you know, major league fishing, I I got a little bit of an advantage. I've been fishing it for seven years already. So, you know, my preparation is the same. The only thing's different that I would say is your mindset of when you're practicing and when you're fishing. You know, for so long, you had to fish for the five biggest bites you can get. Yeah. And, you know, so now the only difference to me is now I'm thinking about finding areas that hold concentrations of fish. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I stunk in math in, in school, but I can tell you 32 pounders is a lot better than five big ones, you know? Right. so. Um, that mindset's different. Outside of that, I'm doing all the same stuff. I'm looking at the schedule. I'm getting my equipment ready. I'm packing the truck. I'm organizing tackle. I'm, I'm going to be ready for any situation, finesse, power fishing, whatever it is. So that's the same, just a little different mindset going into the tournaments. Conquer. Cover your head. Incoming. Watch the lens, Mike. You guys have all that new, the new power baits? Oh, there it goes. Got one? Go. Yeah. Another perch? Yeah. On the grub this the time. greedy grub, that's power bait grub. This is, uh, man, this is one of the most forgotten about baits. You hear all this talk about swim baits, uh, finesse swim baits, whatever, swim baiting. But to me, that old school grub, and I've been fishing this thing since I was a kid. This is the original swim bait. Uh, this is a Berkeley Power Grub, just green pumpkin. I put a little chartreuse on the tail, a little bit of that yellow to match the forage. This is another one of those baits in cold water, late fall, winter time, early pre-spawn. 
that, that can be a real killer. Just fishing on the light head, a VMC, that's a finesse, uh, dominator finesse jig head. Um, I use the same jig head for tubes, Ned head, and even works great on grubs. So another yeller perch. Pretty things, man. Tasty too. Tasty. That thing's sweeter than a walleye right there. Oh. Oh, bigger fish. There we go. Bigger fish. On the grub. You can see the bass are crappie, I can't tell. Are those a big crappie? Look at that, another species. Yeah. I mean, totally sucked down. What do you see this? It's gone. <laughs> Look at this. Oh my god. Nice one. Look at that. Now you know you're throwing the right bait when that happens right there. That's uh, always, whether it's game fish, crappie, perch, bluegill, or if it's a bass, that is testament to throwing the right color. Look at that thing. Beautiful. It's all paled out. The old paper mouth, man, I tell you. Another good sign, you know, we're in an area and there's life. When you're in an area with life, the bass are around, you know. We keep switching baits, we'll find something to, to get one or two of them large enough, but pretty fish. Look at that! That's a large mouth. No, it's a, no, it's a, that's a fatty of perch. Dude. dude, this guy. Look at the size of that thing, bro. Wow. That's Look an at above, that gut. That's an above average size perch. Isn't that funny you stopped reeling? I stopped Did reeling. I was looking at which rod I was using. This is the 7.4. Seven, that's one of the new ones, yep. 7.4 medium light. And I, I picked up, dude, picked up the line. Hammerhead. This thing, open your mouth, buddy. That locked out. There you go. Look at that perch. That's a hammerhead. Hammerhead yeller. Yeah, that's. They call them jumbos, man. Whenever they when that when they get around that big, that's a, that fish is about a pound. Ah, there he goes. And they get over a pound, man. They call them things jumbos. That's that's the biggest yellow perch I've ever seen. That's caught. a big one. I've seen a few over the years of fishing this lake. I've been fishing this lake since I was a kid. I've seen a few, honest to goodness, two pounders. So there are a few, that's a trophy trophy. It's possible to get one. There you go. <laughs> there we got. It's not giant. It's not giant. Another big perch, I think. No, is it? Who's that? Oh yeah, good one. Not, not as big as yours, but that's a good one. Another one on that Berkeley Power Grub. Really, really doing a good job of mimicking what they're eating. It was like that suspending jerk bait and that shad wrap were almost totally right, they, but you can't even work that slow enough, you know? This thing can really, really start to slow down. Not tails just kicking. Yeah, tails kicking. Plus the scent. Scent, little Berkeley Power Bait scent on there. Yeah, I'm excited about, you know, they sort of relaunched, they, you know, they got rid of Havoc and then yeah. they sort of relaunched everything in power bait, a lot of new shapes. It's it's gonna be good for them, man. So when that happened, did they, the, the scent and everything, the plastic's still the same? Or is it is it, that a new it, formula? So what, what I've been told is they remodeled the formula, the power bait formula, off of the original power bait. So it's more akin to what you had in the 80s. Okay. You know, which I think was a, was a better scent, you know. There we go. <laughs> There we go. Looks like a pretty decent one too. I'm back you up here. See if we can get a double. New species. New species. What do we got? Pickerel. Yep. That's good. It's that's awesome when you find a bait that's working because you literally can catch the whole gamut of fish. Now we're on we're on number three. If I can get this in, number three. There it goes. Number three. It's a northern chain pickerel in the pike family. Look at that thing. Just like all pike, I don't know if you see them big chompers on that thing, but uh, there's that Berkeley Power Grub, that power scent, honing in on it. Look at that, it's a beautiful fish right there. It's gorgeous. Big chain, they call it the chain pickle. You can see these interlocking chains, these bars down there. Uh, man, these things are definitely vicious. These things will get up. I think the Jersey record is seven or eight pounds, so that's that fish is only a pound and a half, so you can imagine that fish gets to be seven or eight pounds. It's like a, 
it's like a freshwater shark or a barracuda, you know? It's a cool fish. We are two fish away from the South Jersey Slam. We need a bluegill or we need a bass. The hard thing to do is catch a South Jersey Slam. Very difficult. Yeah, it's almost like when you, when you pause it, like it's, I keep thinking about that one that you had, you know? I'm trying to make it stop, but not enough to catch the bottom, you know? What are we in a couple feet? Two, two, one. Two, one. It's a tricky game, because you want to you want to fish it slow, but not slow enough that you get that, that big mat of black death on there, you know? And I want to keep throwing this, because I'm getting bit on it, but I'm, after a while, I do want to switch that micro jig, because I feel like that, I could even work even slower, mm -hmm. you know, on the bottom. What are you going to put on the back of that? I, I probably use that, um, I take the, the Max Scent has the flatworm, and I cut it, like three quarters of it, I cut it off, and oh God! Something knocked it, that felt like a perch. Um, and I cut that down, and then I just get the scissors and I split the tail. And that's a, that's a real good trail. It almost acts like a little chunk, you know? And then plus it's, it's that real soft, stinky Max Scent too, which I think is good. Is this just one big flat right it's here? It's a big flat, yeah, and the channel's to our right, but you know, thing about it is they don't have to go far and they drop down into it, you know? But it's 2-2 here and probably where you cast it or a hair further. Ooh, right there. I stopped the talk and I had a bite. See, that's, that's telling us what. That wasn't good. That was the GoPro. <laughs> yeah, so, Sorry oh, about that. Here we oh. go. Let's see. Feels like a perch. Another yeller. Perch jerking. Pretty little guys though. Those dorsal fins are no joke too. Oh, there we go. Oh, fish on. Fish. Is that a largey? Oh, Dennis. I think I saw green. Is that a crappie? That's a big crappie. God, it's a big are crappie. Are you serious? Yeah, it's a big crappie. Oh, oh my. <laughs> Look at that thing. Hey! That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, look, look at that, that slab. Yeah, he's blocking out the sun, he's so big. Casting some shade. It's a pretty looking choppy. Right there. That's what it's all about, man. Wintertime fishing. Wintertime fishing right there. Mwah. Love it. Oh, oh. There's a big one. Oh, yeah. I jump like a bass. It's either a bass or a big crappie. Man, that was a cool jump. We go. It's hard to believe this water's 38 degrees and the fish is still jumping. Come on, no large mouth for this slam. Oh, another another pickerel. Ooh. Nice pickerel. Chain pickerel. I don't think I've caught any of these before. Cool fish. Very very cool fish. So just be wary of them teeth. Yeah, just teeth. That's it. Uh, you're calling them like the South Jersey snakes or something snakes. like that. Snakes, oh yeah, they call them snakes Before too. You. They snakes. Daniel, it's a way better place to have a meeting. Uh-oh, see what I'm saying? We're getting a lot of work if done you're, here. If you're in a boardroom, this ain't gonna happen in no boardroom right here. No. Uh, I'm glad we, I'm glad we came here. Right I'm glad, uh, I'm glad we came here to discuss the next two vlog days. Another Ooh. This is. What? Is that his air or swim bladder? <laughs> I think he was agreeing with this being a good day. Oh, oh. Tickler. Oh, oh. oh, we got a bite. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Come on. Oh, Crappie. Back to back. Oh. Crappie. Look at that thing. He chokes ah, it too. Ah! Says this is good. Says this is good. Says this is Doubled up. Here we go. Big perch. Giant perch. Look at this. A big oh perch. Oh my. Look at that. This right here is what it's all about. Cold water fishing. Here we Look go. at that. Having fun. Look at that. Cheers. December. <laughs> the bites is... suck in California right Dude, now. Dude, so this is I'm awesome. Pumped. I want to tell you, on light tackle, both of us are using light spinning rods right now. You've got the 7.4 7 medium yeah. light Ike series rod. I've got the 6.10 medium light Ike series rod. And both these rods, they're, they're drop shot. They're uh, a wacky rig type of rods, but man, 
on, on a grub, a little swim bait, can't beat it. Dual release here. Dual release. One, two. So looking at what you've got pulled out here for today, yeah, you got a lot of obviously your your signature series rods and those reels too. Yeah, it's the first time I've put one of these Ike spinning reels in my hand. Yeah, things badass. Yeah, they're nice. We uh, we worked on them a long time. You know, we the thing with me when I was doing these rod, reels and rods is I wanted to do different stuff. You know, with the rods I wanted different actions. Mm -hmm. With the reels I wanted different ratios and different features. Um, so I'm, I'm happy with the way they came out. You know, one of the things on the casting reels and on the spinning reels, and I noticed you're checking it out right now, is that flared lip on the reel handle, on the, on the grip of the yep. handle. Um, days like today, it's a great example of why I put that on there. Your hands are cold, your hands get wet, they slip off those grips. Just by putting that little flare on there, it really locks your finger into the reel grip and, uh, and makes it more comfortable. So. It's something I, I picked up when I was in Japan. I saw in a few reels, brought it back, conceptualized it on these, and mm -hmm. it's a great, great little feature, man. Come on, you bass! Oh, big one! He's on. Big one! Oh, I got it! Giant! Look at that. Oh, the shadow, sh shadow rep, shad, rep. Oh my god, giant! Giant, giant! Oh, please, stay on there. Large mouth? Yeah, big large mouth. Yes. Oh God, please stay on there. You light on your I mean a giant, dude. Here we go. Oh no, oh, it's my. a giant. It's not a large mouth, it's a giant pike. Oh God, that was a large mouth. Oh, I thought it was a large mouth. Still a nice one. Got him. <laughs> There you go. Look at that. Wow. Man, I got excited. I thought I had a first big largemouth of the day. It's Mr. Chompers, but that's a, look at that. Shadow wrap shad uh, using a little bright color. Again, it's got that orange in the throat. So important this time of the year. And barely hooked him with that VMC treble. Look at that right there. Look at the teeth on that thing. Look at that. I'm going to try to lift them and open it up. That mouth. Crazy. It's a big one right there. Three pound class fish. Man, ah, oh, got my heart going. The old two. Breaking out the micro, folks. Had enough of this. Yeah, I'm gonna try that too. Try a little micro? Yeah, I'll yeah. switch it up. This thing, sometimes them bass get so lethargic they don't want to even come up for anything. They're feeding on little bugs and crawls on the bottom. Yeah, you know, uh, this Daniel, we're, we're going to try. We caught a lot of perch and pickerel and crappie, and now we're going to try to go to the bottom and catch a largemouth. This is a brand new micro jig by Missile Jigs, and this is something that in Japan, you know, was real big. Now it's starting to gain popularity here in the States. A micro jig is definitely not a jig you throw on a casting rod. It's a small profile jig, it's got a real fine, light hook on it, thin skirt. Um, and the neat thing about the missile jig is you could put it with or without a weed guard, depending on the situation. Here we're around a lot of snot grass, so we're going to fish it with the weed guard. And just whatever your little favorite trailer is. But that thing is so subtle, could look like a little crawl or a crustacean or a bluegill. And to me, a good explanation of why this micro jig is so effective, it's like a Ned rig on steroids. Mm -hmm. You know, when that little, when you stop it and that skirt flares, it gives the fish something new to attack that you can't get with a Ned Rig. So it's a neat neat little bait, new category of jig, spinning rod deal for sure. Multi-species? Multi-species, absolutely. We, we'll catch some, we should have catch some perch with this too, but. Uh, We're throwing the 1 16th ounce? 16th ounce, you know, we got three sizes. We have a 16th, uh, a 16th, an eighth, and a 3 16th. And a lot of it, <laughs> I love it. Fluorocarbon in the cold weather is great, isn't it? <laughs> You could actually throw that on another rod That's if you want. That's not what you want. No, no, you don't want that. You could always grab one of these rods with braid if you want. Uh, no, th three sizes, a, a sixteenth, an eighth, and a three sixteenths. And I let the water depth affect the size that I want to throw. You know, here we're in a real shallow environment, one to two feet of water. So a sixteenth is a great size. Uh, deeper water, I'll go with the eighth and the three sixteenths. And that little missile 
Missile crawl Throw is a great on one. Um, in a second here, I'm going to switch to a, a. You can literally take a finesse worm and thread it on. Uh, Berkeley Powerbait Max Scent Flatworm is a real favorite of mine. I cut it down and split the tail. But to me, the action you want on the back of this thing is very subtle. You want something neutral. Um, so I don't want a big action bait on the back. I want a trailer that's, that's got a more neutral action to it. There you go. There, there we go. go. Nope. The perch. First fish on the mini jig. We got about an hour left. See if we can get a bass or a bluegill. Looking for the Slammerino. So on the on the uh, reel you're using, you got some braid. Yeah. Leader. Yes. Yeah, what I'm you using. Got there? Yeah, this is this is the way that I normally like to fish it. You could fish it on straight floral like you're doing, uh, but braid to a floral leader gives you a lot better feel on this micro jig and lets you cast a little further. Yeah, too. you're bombing it like yeah, twice the distance. You definitely get get a lot more distance with it. But uh, I like uh, you know. Six to ten pound braid. This is at New Berkeley. This is at X5 in the crystal color, which I like because I can see the line. Mm -hmm. um, and then I'm using a six pound fluorocarbon Berkeley Trilene 100% fluorocarbon leader. It's a real good combination to give you to give you feel to let you cast further and you get good solid hook sets on it as well. There it goes. Uh oh. There you go. Ah. <laughs> ah. Ah, ah. Go for lay down. On the micro. There you go. All right. Well, look at that. Tell you what, there goes that new missile micro jig. Dude, it was it was a fun day. We caught we caught a ton of fish. I couldn't think of a better place to strategize the next yeah, two days. Yeah, it was an awesome meeting. We'll be sure to do this every time we come out here. You have here to, man. This is the bomb. Good way to warm up. Yeah. Good Get way to warm up. in the right space for the next couple days. Tight so light tackle. Man, this was a fun day, but next two days, I'm ready to catch some bass, bro. Yep, yep. So thanks for joining us in our pre-production meeting here on Lake X. Yes. South Jersey. Yes. Maybe we'll get the slam next time. I think we'll get the slam next time. We Hold did on. pretty good, though. Let me take this call real quick. Yes? Yes. That's right. We're going to kick butt in the next two days vlogging. Okay. Oh, we go. <laughs> Hold on. Somebody else just called. Get Ike, right back. Ike, this is Daniel. Daniel. We... I got it. <laughs> <laughs> the Hold Netflix on. just slept. <laughs> Hold on. The reception's is... kind of bad right it now. It is bad, isn't it? This area is not so good. Fun day, dude. All right, cheers, bro. Cheers. Good day. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> dude, I looked over. <laughs> oh, he was slapping me in the face. That was awesome. <laughs> dude, that's gold right there. I can't wait to see that. <laughs> hey. I prefer them fried, I think, yeah. in a little cornmeal or we something. We talked about perch are good eating, but that's ridiculous, man. Come on. That's sushi style, bro.